Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to add our kind of uh, fake destruction effect, if you like, where we can selectively hack away at those bricks and sort of create interesting patterns and shapes. So we're going to be focusing on this second input now. So what I've done is I've just disconnected the input curve just so I've got just fewer bricks to work with just so I can test the principle of the system is working as intended. And what we want to do is to take uh, a volume it doesn't have to be a sphere it could be uh, you know it could be a series of spheres it could be any piece of geometry you want and what the, the plan is is to use this as a bounding volume to selectively remove bricks from the wall okay so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of place it using the gizmo here if you can't see the gizmo just press enter over the keyboard to bring that up so what we're expecting to happen is this volume will cut away at the brick pattern there Okay, and we're going to use uh, a similar sort of switching technique as we did uh, for our input curve here. Um, so let's jump in and get started. So where we need to actually do this is actually at quite a low level um, because the way we've configured the build of the bricks, we can just remove that initial geometry from the start of the system and then those bricks will never get created. So it's going to maintain this brick pattern that we've, um, that we've generated. Um, so let's just find a suitable place where we can do that. Um, so what we need to do is round about here, once we've added in some noise parameters and we've converted these lines into individual primitives. So this convert line is the node that we're interested in. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, this network's getting quite messy. So I'm just going to temporarily move this for each to one side just so we've got some more space to, to work with. In fact, I'm going to move the whole thing down a little bit just so I've got a bit of room because we know we're going to do some work here. So this convert line, is kind of the starting point for the brick build if you remember so if I turn on my point display and my primitive display you can see this convert line is splitting up these splines if you like these little pieces of geometry into individual primitives now what we can do is we can use a group sop to select these points that are included in that input and just blast them out of the system and then they won't ever be considered for a brick build Okay, and we can make use of a group, group node. Plug the first input in there. Okay, put the display flag onto the group now so we can see what we're working with. The group name I'm going to call blast brick because I know it'll be going into a blast node. We're not interested in primitives this time. We'll do it on points, okay? And what we want to do, we don't want to enable the base group by default so we can turn that off. And you can see all the points get deselected from that. What we want is keep in bounding regions. So I'm going to enable that. And by default, it gives you a bounding box, which you could use. Um, but ultimately, what we want is a bounding object. So we're going to set that to bounding object. OK, and currently we get an error because there's nothing plugged into this second input. All right. So this is where the bounding geometry is going to come in. And we know we've got it coming in on our second input here. So this subnetwork input two. I'm just going to bring this down to here. Okay. And plug that in. Okay. Still getting an error because we don't have anything plugged in. So I'm going to plug in that sphere and jump back in. And now you can see our error is gone. And we've selecting those points based on based on the volume of the input sphere and remember this this input geometry can be anything uh, anything that you need to sort of define you can have like a rough edge at the top or something whatever you need you can just sim do a simple model and that sort of cutting volume will will work fine okay so with those enabled what we want to do is then blast out that group so with a blast node and we can select that group from the group field okay so that's removed those bricks for us and maintained that pattern so our brick build structure will still continue to function however there is an issue we need to resolve with these what we call degenerate points that don't connect to anything they don't form a polygon or they don't form a line so we need a way to fix that okay and again there's a couple of ways that we could do it um, we could drop down a facet node plug that in 
And then there is an option in the Facet node for remove degenerate. And you can see that's removed that single point. Okay. Or we could do it with a wrangle node. So plug in a wrangle. And we could do that neighbor count thing that we've seen already in this series. So we'll create an integer variable called neighbor count and make use of that neighbor count function. Okay, referencing index zero and the current point number. All right, and then we can say if n count is equal to zero, as in it doesn't have anything connected to it, you know, it's degenerate, it's out there on its own, then we can simply remove that point using the remove point function from index zero and the current point number that we're processing. All right, cool. Exactly the same effect, you know? And if you middle click on the uh, the node of the wrangle there, you can see that last cook took 0 0.2, <laughs> 0 0.02 of a millisecond. Okay, so pretty rapid Houdini works through this stuff. Uh, if we middle click on the facet node, you can see that took 0 0.6, so it's, you know, considerably slower, especially if we're processing, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of points. Um, you know, you might see a slight increase in, um, in speed of the cooks. And, you know, this might seem trivial at this stage, but as, you, as your networks get more complex and continue to grow and you're asking Houdini to do more stuff, it's these little kind of um, time-saving things that can really help speed up your work you know um so that's why i like wrangle nodes because you do see a very very um noticeable increase in in the cooking times and, and the speed of your networks um so that's kind of the point of this series really is to sort of focus in on using wrangle nodes uh to do simple geometric tasks and simple tasks such as adding removing points and things like that um because nine times out of ten you know houdini will contain a node that does it for you but it's also having to process a bunch of other stuff as well which kind of slows it down so we're going to stick with the attribute wrangle method of doing it so you can see we've cleaned away that that uh, degenerate polygon so now what we need to do is a very similar thing using a switch node and we're going to plug in our convert line okay so bypassing that group system and then we're going to plug in our attribute wrangle and put the switch statement on there so currently again like we did with the previous uh, example we currently on in input zero, so that's the full wall. And if we switch over to input one, we're now going down this path where it's deleting those bricks. So again, we need to apply that string compare function to our switch statement, okay? So I'm going to hover over the uh, input and I'm gonna press Alt E this time to bring up that expression editor, okay? And the expression we're going to use is well, it's almost identical to what we did previously. So we can start an if statement with a string compare. We can reference op input path to get a reference to the string from the parent node at input index one this time, because remember we're indexing second input. So index zero, index one for the second input. And we'll compare it to nothing again, all right? And if this equals zero, then we want to return input zero. Okay, so pass straight through. Otherwise, one. All right, so that's the same expression that we've been looking at there. Sorry, I've missed out a, a zero there. So there we go, that's how it should be. Okay, so if this expression, this string comparison expression, returns a zero. And if we look back onto our text bot, returns zero if string one is equal to string two. So if there's nothing plugged into this, it's going to return index zero of our switch, which is currently bypassing the group field, okay? Otherwise, it's going to return one where we do the processing of the groups there, all right? So I'm going to hit apply and accept. Go back to my scene view. And now what we'll find is that there's another error that we need to fix. So for example, if I jump up a level and disconnect this, 
you can see the group field doesn't like it okay because the group field is expecting something plugged into this because we've enabled bounding object okay so what we can do is we can add an expression to this toggle all right so, so let me grab my notes just to make sure i'm getting these numbers right it confuses me sometimes um, expression right okay so in this keep in bounding regions expression we can right click on this parameter and edit its expression and here we are we're back in to the edit expression and these toggles uh you can address them as a zero off one being on okay so we can make that same string comparison string comp op input path from the parent node of index one and if that equals nothing then in this case oops so if they do match in this case we want to turn it off otherwise we want to turn it on okay so again all we're doing is just comparing if there is something plugged into that index one okay so now when we hit apply and accept you can see it's procedurally disabled that okay so now we can plug the output of our switch node into the input of the for each node below it put the display flag back on our output jump up a level and just give it a test so i'm going to plug in this sphere and there we go you can see we're selectively hacking away at that wall and we can position the sphere anywhere we like and it's super responsive really really quick we can really dial in the type of look that we're going for so if you're going for a kind of like a ruined castle wall you know you can place these spheres around in different places um, and it's completely procedural as well so we could hold down alt to create a copy of that sphere merge them together and then position this one kind of out here somewhere plug that in you can see now we can add multiple layers of this kind of destruction to create some really interesting and kind of damaged and broken walls uh, as you as you see fit cool so that was the uh the the volume damage system um working as intended so let's just go back and plug in our simple curve see if everything's working and there you go you can see the effect a bit more clearly there we've got uh, a nice sort of procedural way of very quickly creating some interesting damaged uh, structure to those walls in a very very quick and procedural way all right cool so that effectively um, brings us all the way back around to video one where we looked at the tool so if you've managed to make it this far uh, thank you very much please let me know in the comments how you found it um, I really enjoy doing these tutorials so if you've got any any comments uh, of ways I can improve or any any um, series that you'd like that'd be super cool I'm, I'm more than happy to sort of uh, share my Houdini knowledge with you guys let me know in the comments like and subscribe um, and if you know if this was particularly useful to you please check out my Ko-Fi um, I'm a big fan of a double espresso uh, so if you if you're feeling in a generous mood please uh, check out my Ko-Fi and, uh, and make a donation there that'd be very very kind and will be certainly much appreciated um, I think what we'll do as a little appendix to this video series we'll look at ways we can use this tool to bake out uh, something that's more game ready because uh, at the moment this is obviously let's have a look we're looking at quite a lot of, uh, of triangles in its in its high definition state um, but this could be the basis of um, building you know an infinite range of brick wall trim sheets for example for use in a game engine um, so perhaps we'll take a look at that at a later date uh, and also how could we take this output and generate a low polygon representation of it and sort of take a look at some of the challenges that that would involve um so yeah stick around for that like and subscribe thank you very much for watching and like i said if you've made it this far um, please share the results I'd love to see this uh, in use if you manage to use it in a shot or in production that would be absolutely amazing I would love that so please keep in touch and uh, hopefully I will see you in the next video thanks